Hey, from wherever you're watching, welcome to yet another fantastic episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm Ben Mackey from Scribe Copywriting. I'm Prosper's guest today, and I'm going to share a special story from my own history in line this month with Movember. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and today. I've brought you back none other than Ben Mucky. Ben, how are you doing today? I'm doing well today. Thanks, Prosper. I noticed you have shaved. What What's going on there? Well, as we're recording this right now, it's the 2nd of November, and that means that we're into the second day of the month of November. Uh, and this is something I've been doing now for nine years. So I've, as of yesterday, I've started fresh, and we'll see how this goes. Oh, fantastic. You see, I'm very jealous of people that can grow their mustache. This has been going on for the last eight years, and I'm still <laughs> trying to really put it out. But then again, I mean, obviously, so excited to have you back on the show again. Ben, for those that haven't checked out his, um, you know, work and content, you want to check out Scribe um, Copywriting on, and I'll be putting all the details at the bottom. Now, Ben is a, an accomplished copywriter but today he's not going to be talking about his work he's going to be talking about his journey as to how he became who he is today and one of the greatest parts of life though is our ability to change or adapt who you are today is a temporary being of who you are capable of becoming and if you feel like you're in a bad place i think ben is just going to be walking you through where he was and what he eventually did to become one of the most sought after copywriters um that i know of now ben it was New Year's when you were telling me that story and I zoned out because I wanted us to record this. What was happening then? And, you know, what what actually got you to start changing um, your life for the better? Sure thing. All right. So for the people at home, I was before we went live, I was just telling Prosper my story. I did write an article about this uh, a couple of years ago, but I'll bring you up to speed. So. I I graduated when I was 23. I was doing a Bachelor of Animation degree up at QCA in Brisbane. I graduated. I moved back home into state and, you know, I wanted to get into film and TV. That was my goal back then. And over probably the next 18 months, there were just a few little things that happened. And I got to this point where I just, I felt like life was passing me by. I felt like life was passing me by. Skip forward to when I was about 24, 25, I'd moved back up to Brisbane because I still had a lot of friends up there and I had a lot of things going on. And I'd sort of had to leave that all behind overnight because I didn't have a reason to be there anymore. I'd graduated. And so I came back to live with my folks. But after about six months, it just felt like I was living in the past down here. So I had moved back to Brisbane um, and state of my life was that there were a couple of little creative projects that I was working on, but I was just working full-time retail liquor, um, working that roster. And it was just a whole bunch of different things that, that were happening. I got to this point where I, yeah, well, I was almost 25 at the point, at that point in time. And I was just really underwhelmed with the way that my life was. I remember there was this, there was this, it was early winter, I think it was. And there was this morning where I woke up and I just had this knot in my gut. I, I couldn't get back to sleep. I just had this real anxiety. This knot in my gut, just this, this feeling that for all the dreams that I'd had for the things that I'd wanted to achieve, it was beyond my reach. And that maybe this position that I found myself in was just, that was as good as it got for me. Uh, I don't know if, if there are people out there who felt that way, but it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling. It's just, you almost feel trapped. And that was a thing, Prosper. I felt trapped. And it wasn't like, I, I had a busy social life at that point in time. Um, The place that I was living, I had, there were these two girls that uh, were my flatmates and they were 18 and 19. And they joked once that I must think that they were losers with no social life by comparison, because I was out pretty much every weekend and weeknights going to this party or that gathering or this club, that sort of stuff. And 
if you'd seen the photos from my life around that point in time, I probably looked like a lot of other 24, 25 year old guys, just happy and out drinking with your buddies and that sort of thing. And the thing was, is that for me, I was drinking to switch off a lot of the, a lot of it was just, just to tune out and to switch off. But the, uh, the devil's always waiting for you there at the other end of the bottle. After you, the more that you drink, the more you start to get that anxiety back about the state of your life. And that was a position I, I found myself in. Cause I had this, I had this monologue at the time that was just going, Oh man, like I'm, I'm halfway through my twenties already. Like when are things going to change before I know it, I'm going to be 30 years old and I'll still be doing this. And I had all these dreams, like ever since, ever since high school, I kind of was still in that mindset of, Oh, this is going to happen. And this is going to happen. And it wasn't happening for me. It wasn't happening for me. And I was really underwhelmed with the state of my life. And you see other people who are achieving great things and, I didn't really feel like I was starting anything of, of, of substance. It just felt like my life had stagnated since that high of, of finishing my, my degree after being at uni for three or four years. So yeah, it was like, it was just a difficult period. It really was a difficult period. There were times I'd be driving along and you'd see a bus coming the other way. And I think, you know, I'd think to myself, like, you know what, if, if there's a quota for today, like, if, if there's a certain quota of, of if, if God's got a certain quota today, like I'm not going to be mad if this bus swerves and takes me out. And it was never anything more serious than that, but you just have these moments where I know I, I had these moments where I just, I didn't care. I wouldn't have cared. It just, it felt better than just living in the day to day and just going to work. And I had no ambition whatsoever to go up any, any higher up in the company that I was working for. It was just time and a paycheck. And, I was good with money. I didn't, I was always good with money and, and that sort of thing. And like I said, I had an, I, I had an active social life, but internally, internally, like there was this, just, there was this massive gap between my, but you know, between my life as it was and my life as I wanted it to be. And it was just like, it just, it felt like I couldn't bridge that gap. And I was beginning to wonder if that was just, if that's just where I was stuck. Um, and it it actually went to the point, it went to the point where I actually saw a psychologist a couple of times. And I remember going in, I, I kind of had this, uh, there, there's a, I don't know if you're familiar with the series Curb Your Enthusiasm. Right. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. On one yeah. of the DVDs, on one of the DVDs, the picture on the front is Larry David is sitting back in the psychologist's couch and he's in the middle of explaining his problems. And then the psychologist is just sitting there like this. And that was, that was what I feared would be the scenario going in that like my problems are just going to be too much for the, for this, this person to deal with. But they actually said I'd, I'd done a lot of the thinking that they needed to do. Like I'd actually worked a lot of it out for myself. And so that was, that was perhaps my first sign that I wasn't as far off as I thought that I was. That was my first sign, perhaps, that maybe things weren't as bad as, as I thought, and that just I needed to make a couple of little, of little adjustments here or there, and that would bring me back. But yeah, it was it was probably an eighteen month period there, Prosper, where I was yeah I was just underwhelmed, and I was kind of going down this spiral, and I was just looking for distractions. A lot of the distractions that you can find if you're in your twenties, like I was, and you don't really have the same responsibilities that you do as you get older. So, yeah. So, yeah. Skip forward to skip forward to the Christmas period that year. And if you've worked in retail, you know you know what that's like. I mean, far out. Not every song that they play in store has to be Christmas carols. Let's put it to you that way. But it's just it's just a really hectic time. And I normally love Christmas, as a lot of people do. But just working retail made me hate it. Like it's just so much to deal with. And um, I. I had a week off. I got given a, a rostered week off uh, starting Christmas Eve. So I flew back and I saw my family for a couple of days, took that time off. Um, and it was around this period in time that I'm thinking, oh, I, I don't want to do this again. Like I don't want to, I don't want to do another festive season working in retail, stuff that. So I I came back, came back to Brisbane and as it turned out, I was working till close on New Year's Eve. So I was working to, I think it was a nine o'clock close. Got out of there about 9.30 after doing all the store closure procedures. And I had to be back there the following morning, like to do like an, an open at 9.30 for the Alcos and the people that like, the, the kind of people that 
want to go and get grog at like the moment the store opens on New Year's Day, those kind of people. But I had I had a a friend's gathering and it was over at a at a mate's place. One of his friends lived if you if you know Brisbane, there's this suburb called Kangaroo Point. It's right down on the Brisbane River there. Um, and his friend had an apartment there. And so I got in late because everybody got their hours before I did. But of course, me had to close up the store. And so I got in late and had a couple of drinks to make up for, for lost time. And then we migrated to the rooftop of this apartment, just looking out the night sky and that. And I just, I remember looking up at, looking up at the night sky, looking up at the stars. And I was just thinking about the, the previous 18 months of my life, more or less. And I had this realization that I was just, I was done with it. I didn't want, like, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I just remember thinking something along the lines of like, whatever it takes from here, I'm going to turn this around. What, whatever I have to do to get out of this, I'm, I'm going to do it because I'm sick of just, I'm sick of this underwhelming feeling. I'm sick of this feeling like I don't really measure up. I'm sick of feeling like I've just, I'm underachieving my whole life for lack of a better word. And I didn't have a plan of action at all. I just, I knew that I was done and I couldn't, I couldn't last another 12 months just going the way that I'd been going. And it was just as simple as that. Like I didn't have a plan, but I just thought, nah, whatever it takes, whatever I have to do to get out of this, I'm going to do it. And so then there was the countdown and then the fireworks, all that sort of stuff. And of course I couldn't stay out too late because I had to go back home so I could be up to open the store the next day. But that was, that was really the beginning of, of everything that followed. Absolutely. I, I really, really respect a lot of people that um, see something that they need to fix and then go after fixing it. But I just want to, bring you back a little bit because you keep referring to the fact that you you looked at your life at that particular time when you were 25 and in retail um and it it wasn't what you thought um it would be looking like now just give me a, a glimpse of what society would have painted that when you would have arrived at that sort of age what would be the trappings or what would have been around or what are the things that you would have thought okay if i see this in my life right now um this might mean that some sort of success has been um you know founded based on what you're seeing around you yeah sure well i'm sure for a lot of people when you're sort of 18 19 and you think about your life when you're 25 it seems you see it seems so old to be 25 and for me, I, I guess I, I thought that I would be working in film and TV because, like I said, I did a Bachelor of Animation degree. I thought I'd be working in that, working on on cool projects, doing that full-time or um, doing it part-time at least, getting established there. I had plenty of good friendships. Like I said, I had a really active social life and everything, but I guess there was also a part of me, even back then, that was thinking further down the track and that, for lack of a better word, I, I wanted to settle down. And I was still very much sort of living the bachelor's lifestyle. And so it was, it was, I wasn't feeling that personal fulfillment and I saw that happening or it appeared to be happening for a lot of other people. They were getting set up in their careers. They were starting to take the first steps towards an actual serious career. Cause like I said, I, I, I definitely didn't want to go any higher in the rung of my retail job than I did. I didn't want to be a store manager. Didn't want those extra responsibilities. It was really just a, just a weekly paycheck for me. And when you when you have a bunch of problems to deal with, especially going through that Christmas period where it's it's a very hectic period, and you've got all these problems, all these little fires to put out, and it's not connected to something that actually resonates with you, not not connected to a passion. It just feels like such a drag prosper on top of all this other stuff that was going on in the background of my life. Um, and the interesting thing was is that. I remember, I mean, this was after I made that decision that I was telling you about on New Year's Eve, probably like eight or nine months later, and I'll get to that, I'll get to that shortly. Like by that stage, my life was already showing the signs of turning itself around. But I still remember clearly one day I was I was driving along and I was listening to the current affairs program on Triple J called Hack. For some of you at home will know what that is, but this program called Hack, it's on Triple J, the ABC's youth radio station. But they were talking about this survey that uh, had come out and it revealed that the most unhappy group of people of all by age were 25 year olds. 
and my ears picked up at that because uh, you know because that was where i'd been and i was listening to people calling in and talking about how like oh you have this certain idea of how your life's going to be and then it's not like that and then other people saying oh you know when i was 25 i was skiing in japan and i had no money but i was dead happy and but it really resonated with me that that a lot of people have this idea of how how life is going to be by the time they're midway through their 20s and that it's going to be just you know one exciting adventure after another and getting putting actual building blocks in their life and it's not happening and you begin to think that you that you've screwed up and that you've done something wrong because we have this perception a lot of there's this perception i think through the media and a lot of a lot of people in society that if you don't have it all together by the time you're 30 then you're a has-been and you're washed up and it's too late and that was what was really eating away at me at the time fantastic well ben i don't know if you've been watching netflix lately you know it's usually a series that has taken people 11 uh years to to film and we can just binge it all in like 11 hours without any yeah. commercials now each episode starts off like this you know there's a there's a kid the kid grows up goes to kindergarten the kid goes to uh high school from high school they get their first kiss then they get uh engaged from there they go yeah. to college um and then pretty much from there they get married kid number one kid number two they get a promotion from work then they retire and then they die all in one episode so i think there's an entitlement um you know feel that hollywood has created amongst us to anticipate that you know when you get to a certain age things are supposed to look um you know, a certain way. Now, fast forward to today. What, when everything changed, what does life look like now for Ben? And um, maybe we can just have a quick look at, um, you know, what people can expect because people might be looking at that thinking, oh, maybe that's the situation that I'm in and maybe all the glimmer of hope might be dwindling. What what does life sure. look like for you now? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I'll take you back to that point immediately after that new year's eve like i said at that point i didn't have a plan but i just i had this conviction i just made this decision that whatever it took whatever i was going to have to do i would turn it around and things didn't turn around straight away but over the period of the next six months or so little things happened uh i quit my job working retail found another job and then i think it just little things began to open up new opportunities began to open up. I started meeting new people. And by the end of that year, I was in a really good place. The end of that following year, I was was one of the happiest periods of my life. And I still reflect on it fondly now because when you've had, as I had, when you've had, you know, two, three years where in some ways it feels like the world's closed off to you and you, you don't have a second chance to go from that to feeling like the world itself is just opening up to you and there's opportunities everywhere and and you can totally take it it's such a liberating feeling it was to, i think to go from one to go from feeling the way i did to just getting almost like this this new lease on life was just amazing but it didn't happen overnight it was just little by little things were developing and then probably a year or so after that i had an old friend of mine who I was just talking about what I want to do with my future. An old friend of mine actually recommended this 10 part series uh, by Tony Robbins. And I hadn't really listened to anything by Tony Robbins. Like I knew the name and I knew he had these weekend retreats where people paid thousands of dollars, all that sort of stuff. And I was just a bit like, eh, I don't know, but I had this old friend and he had a 10 part series called time of your life. And he was like, Oh, I'll, I'll load it onto your laptop for you. That sort of stuff. And I just thought, yeah, all right, go ahead. But that series, 10-part series, I ended up listening to all 10 episodes uh, and I've listened to it several times over to this day. But that was really great at actually putting ideas into plan and really getting clear on what my what I actually had a passion for, why I wanted to do the things I wanted to do with my life and breaking that down into little bite-sized chunks. And I still follow that framework to this day, 10 years later. I still follow that to this day in terms of organizing not just my week, what like what I want my week to look like, but every few months, like what do I want this next quarter to look like? What do I want the next year to look like? And that was a really great way of finally being able to turn, because not everything turned turned around straight away for me, Prosper, like I said, there were still these gray areas, but it really helped me to actually start making positive change on an incremental and measurable basis. 
So skip forward not long after that. And th that was when I started getting the idea to go into business for myself and, and look at copywriting because I'd had people suggest that. And so, yeah, out of that, uh, I founded Scribe. And this month actually marks the 10th anniversary of Scribe becoming a registered business. Um, and that in itself has been its own journey. So to bring it to the current day, Prosper, and I was just saying this to a friend of mine last week, uh, like I've everything isn't perfect right now. I've got a ton of problems to, to deal with and stuff that as we're recording this is still like, I've still got to look at and stuff that hasn't been finished. But at the very least for me, it's stuff that I actually care about. Like, I'm happy to have the problems that I do for the most part these days because it actually relates to something that that matters to me. And yeah, I, I guess with Movember coming around again, there's this focus on men's mental health. And I know a lot of guys out there, uh, they're doing it tough for different reasons. Maybe they're doing it tough for the same reasons that I was and they're at the same age or they're older and people have relationship breakdowns or they have ongoing issues to deal with or they're not entirely happy with the career path that they've chosen. It could be anything. And yeah, so that with this focus on men's health and taking part in Movember, I just, it made me think about a time in my life where things weren't what they are now, not in terms of my not not my my outside environment, but also most importantly my inside environment as well. Because happiness, it, it's an inside job. You can find all the external things in the world that you think are going to make you happy. Whether we're talking your relationships, your finances, like the the irony is, is that back that that period of my life that I was talking about, I had a bigger friendship circle and a more active social life than than I do now. But um that wasn't that wasn't everything like people could have seen me out and about and i probably would look the same way that a lot of a lot of guys in their early 20s look to me these days and you just think that they're carefree and happy but there's all this stuff going on that you you might not even know about and i remember the way that that was and how easy it was just to deceive people into thinking that i was just this because i had i had people you, you meet different people and they say the same things about you and i kind of had this reputation as like you know, one of those guys who just loved to party and, and you know, was was out, was out ready to roll a drop of a hat, but that wasn't my whole life. I had all this stuff going on in the background and until I got that sorted, I couldn't enjoy everything else. Absolutely. I, I viscerally believe that we're here to live, to learn and to contribute. And I'm having a strong suspicion that um, the reason why maybe while you were 25, um, you know, you, you, you just felt like everything just needed to stop for you was because you were not contributing, um, you know, to, to the greatness of humanity. Do you actually think that after you having seen people like Tony Robbins contributing their knowledge, their wealth and everything else that comes along with it, that sort of gave you that sort of, uh, sort of new lease on life when, when you saw other people doing what, what it is that they absolutely love to help other people, uh, have a happier existence. Yeah, it did. Like it was, it was interesting because first of all, if, if I had to put it into a timeline, first of all, I just made that decision. Like I said, I just, I just decided, I said, whatever it takes to change things, I'm going to do it. And then over the space of the next year, the next 12 months, little things began to open up and change. And, and that was really exciting point in time as well. And that was a buzz that lasted for about six months or so. And then, um, and then you kind of get to this point where it's like, yeah, okay, well, you look forward to this this next party or this next experience or this next trip, but what comes after that? And that started to get me thinking more about my future. And then and then came um then came that old friend of mine downloading that series and then listening to that. And that was that was the the next level up for me because it was now like, okay, now I can actually put a plan in place. I can actually break this down, I can I can put things into action and I can begin to actually turn things around beyond just living for the next great experience. And it's just all been a result of, of building from that. It just continually building. Absolutely. And obviously if you're watching this right now, you can um, understand that life is challenging and there's no doubt about it. And certainly, you know, you must try to transition from, um, you know, from being that young carefree person to an adult, like what Ben mm. has managed to do and obviously stay healthy and make enough money to support you and your loved ones, depending on what stage you are in your life. And you actually have to navigate all these social pressures and not having to succumb to being the party 
um, the life of the party because you definitely will burn out and everything else that might be nagging you. And and sometimes it actually just takes, um, you know, you making that decision to get yourself out of the rut so you can actually um, start being, doing and having um, a, ha a happier existence. Now, some of the things that you're mentioning there, uh, Ben, you mentioned that, you know, happiness is an inside uh, job. And, um, you know, that could be something new for quite a lot of uh, the people that are hearing this for the first time. Could you just elaborate on that um, statement alone that happiness does happen to be an inside job? Yeah, sure. Well, it's really just a case of of finding the things that you can actually be grateful for at any point in time. Like, again, if I was to go back to when I was 23, 24, there were a lot of things that I had to be grateful for, but I just, I was so focused on what do I do now? What about this that I didn't appreciate them? So if you can appreciate those things and you can appreciate also the things that you no longer have to deal with, like to this day, there are still point that there are still times where, you know, if I'm doing something work related, and there's something that's frustrating or difficult, I can just think, yeah, well, at least I'm not working retail. At least I'm not working retail in the Christmas period. At least I don't have to listen to the same, you know, the same bloody Christmas carols like 10 times over in a day or any of that sort of stuff. And that, that's one thing to be happy about. And then there's, as I said, there's also just taking a look at the stuff that you've achieved more recently. And if if you keep your mind on that, if you keep your mind on the little improvements that you're making in a um, in, in a particular area of your life. Like I, I break everything up in my life into eight different areas and they include the physical aspect of life, the financial, my career, family, all that sort of stuff. And if I can see that I'm improving in those little areas and I'm making, you know, making these little improvements or I'm, I'm hitting these certain milestones, then that also just, it puts things, puts things into perspective. Uh, I think it's like if you go for if, if you've ever gone for a hike and you've gone up the side of a mountain or something, it's a bit of a trek up there, you know, like it's a it's a bit tiring and you've got to stop and take a breather, but you don't really see everything. You don't really see how far you've come until you get to the very peak and you've got a hell of a view to enjoy up there. And it's only then that you realize just how far you've gone. And as long as you as, as long as people take a break and they stop and they look back and go, yeah, well, I'm here. I, I was there, but look what I've done. That also that also helps you to get in a better state of mind. Meditation absolutely is king as well. I highly recommend everybody who's listening gives that a shot if that's not something that they do regularly already. There's a whole bunch of things. There's a whole bunch of things prosper, but in a nutshell, none of none of where I'm at now, or pretty much none of it, would have uh, would have happened. Wouldn't have manifested in my life if I just hadn't made that single decision. Uh, way back then when I was 25 and that's the thing for people like if if there's something that you really want to change you might not have all the details I didn't have all the details I didn't know that I was gonna that I was gonna start scribe copywriting when I was 25 I had still I still primarily wanted to get into film and tv and, and work on animation and create my own stuff but it was just making that decision and just going whatever it takes like whatever I have to do I'm going to do it and everything else flowed on from that Absolutely. And I really appreciate that. I really, really value how you've touched up on health because I viscerally believe you can't do well if you do not feel well. But also, you know, that that might not just be the only thing that, you know, contributes to one's overall success. You know, you are, um, you know, you keep going back to the same sort of statement about the pivotal decision that mm. you made, which actually became the straw that broke the camel's back. But also along the journey, you had people that were around you and we are the average of five people that we spend most of the time with, um, despite how close you might be with other people. Some might actually influence you, um, you know, to do good or some might influence you to do, um, you know, things that might deter you from getting towards your destiny. In your sort of own observation with how you have come full circle, how has the influence of other people really helped you either stay consistent to who you are becoming and actually, um, you know, stay true to the decision that you made for yourself? Yeah, I think the, the thing about the relationships that you have is to realize that not everybody is going to go to the end of the line with you. Some people are going to move on. There is going to be people 
who are in your life for a certain period of time and then you drift apart. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it was a bad relationship. It's just that some things have a, have a time on them. Um, that there are people that are in your life in your early 20s and they're great for you then, but then you get older and for whatever reason, through time, through changes to family dynamic, anything else like that, it's better for you to go your separate ways. But it doesn't mean that they're, that they're a bad person. You can learn things from most people. And that's that's something I've realized more recently is that even the people that you don't think have anything to offer can, in fact, you know, pretty much everybody has something that you can learn from them. When it comes to the people that you that you keep close, well, you've you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful about where you're at, and you want to make sure first and foremost that you're in a good place. Because as they say, your your vibe attracts your tribe. So if you're an insecure person, then you're going to attract people who are insecure. And I've written articles about it before, but insecure people are just they're inherently toxic people because they're only comfortable with you so long as you're not challenging them. If, if you start to challenge their view of themselves and their own low opinion of themselves, then they'll do anything to, to try and claw you back. And that's what you got to watch out for. So you got to, like I said, after, after, if you've made that decision that you want to change things for the better and you're starting to see new things manifest into your life, you also want to reevaluate the people that you're comfortable with uh, because they might be taking up a space that somebody else who could who could be a far better influence in your life and better company as well that they could be taking up, but it will all flow from there. It all starts with you. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much money you're making or where you're holidaying or what car you've got or what your address is or anything like that. If you don't have it right in here, first and foremost, then you can only go so far and you're only going to enjoy all those external things so far because the relationships that you have, your status, clothes, cars, all that stuff, those are externals. But if you don't have the internals fixed up first and foremost, then you're quite limited. We've seen it any amount of times with Hollywood A-listers and musicians and that who have all kinds of dysfunctional relationships and substance abuse and in some sad cases, even even you know suicide attempts. Um, and that, that, that's what I love about this, again, to bring it back to Movember, is that we sort of stop and we, we have a conversation about that because um, I think as, as guys, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of weight in our shoulders. I know that's what, what it was for me in my early 20s, this feeling that I didn't measure up. There's this weight on your shoulders to, to be someone uh, of substance, of achievement. And when you feel like you're failing that, you can get really down on yourself. Oh, absolutely. And I, I value you being you know, willing to share with us, especially, you know, stages in your life um, to to that effect. Now, all of this that you're talking about is pointing towards one thing, which is change and yeah. getting people out of their own sort of comfort zone. Now, I believe that in order for you to turn your life around, you have to be willing to change. And as challenging as it can be, you know, first of all, you have to be vulnerable to actually accept that you need that change. And you also have to be able to make sure that your actions now match the person who you're becoming and your tendencies are also, um, you know, to match that so that you do not renege. How strong is, um, you know, it a reason uh, sort of to, to work around to be willing to change or to move out of your comfort zone if you really want something, um, you know, to, to change about your life? So are you asking how important is it to get out of your comfort zone if you want to change? Yeah, things? pretty much like you did, getting out of what yeah. was, yeah. Well, yeah, sure. If you're in a bad place, then the things that are comfortable for you might be it might be killing you slowly, not just sort of in terms of bad physical habits, but bad mental habits. They're just shutting down your potential. They're shutting down your opportunities. And when it comes to the company that you keep as well, like those people are taking up your time and those people are going to be your circle of influence. So sometimes, I mean, think about it when you're a, when you're a teenager and you have what's called growing pains. That's not comfortable, is it? It's not comfortable lying in bed and then waking up at two in the morning because you get this strange aching feeling in like your shin bones or your arms and that, but that's part of growing. Um, and sometimes those changes aren't going to be comfortable. It's like if you, if you haven't trained at the gym for ages and then you start a, uh, you, you start a, a fitness plan, 
it's going to hurt. The first couple of times that you go to the gym, it's it's going to hurt. But then after a while, it just it become that becomes comfortable. I think we're, we're a society that has become so obsessed with comfort and convenience. And I'd actually argue in a lot of cases that convenience is not, it doesn't serve us. It actually makes things worse for us. Uh, because when you step out of that path of just unless, seeking, unless it's 7-Eleven. Ah, oh, of course, of course. But <laughs> when you, when you just keep looking for shortcuts, yeah, shortcuts to everything, you don't really learn anything. You don't actually grow. And they lead to long cuts further, further down the track. Not that every, I mean, not, not that you should always just make things as complicated as possible, but, I think men need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in a lot of cases, because on the other side of that discomfort is actually going to come something greater. Like if, if I, and, and like, this is the way I think of a prospect in a, in a hypothetical alternate universe, let's say that uh, once I got straight out, once I finished school at 18, I went to uni, did my degree for three years and then straight away got lined up with this job. Uh, and it was a great job. Everything that I wanted paid well, uh, had good relationships, maybe married young, had a family, all that sort of stuff. Hypothetically, if I'd got to 25 years old and that was my life, I'd feel like I had it made. But looking at who I was now, I, I don't know how I would have held on to it. And I think it would have caused bigger problems further down the track. I think I would have got to this point where I just would have been like, what the hell am I doing? And it just would it would have felt like I just sleepwalked into a lot of things. Uh, in a strange way, I'm, I'm grateful that things turned out the way that they did. And I realized that, that I mean, yeah, there, there were, it was almost like a sculpture. It was almost like an unfinished sculpture. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it's not finished. And I wasn't finished. I was far from finished at 25. I was far, let alone 21. There were still things that I needed to just to chip away at and, and to, I mean, I'm not a finished product now even. Um, it's just, you, you can get all those good things quite early on, but they might not necessarily be good things because if you haven't done the internal work and you haven't had that 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 soul searching yet, then you're just you're building a it's like building a house on bad foundations. You want to get your foundations right. You want to make sure that your roots are in a sound place, and then you can grow on that and you can build on that. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, if somebody's watching right now and they probably are feeling um you know down on their luck um but they stumbled upon this um sort of episode what sort of advice can you give them um you know just so that they can be able to really really turn their life around yeah sure look i have i have gone on a bit today but if uh if you're still not clear i'll break it down into three really simple things to do and this is what helped me and i know it's helped other people as well is that uh first of all you want to get clear on what it is that you want to move past, what you want to move away from. Second thing that you want to do is work out what it is that you want. Like, what would you like to see? If you could wave a magic wand, what changes do you want to see in yourself and in your life as a reflection of your thoughts and your actions? How does that look? Only when you've got clear on those two things, then you do the third thing. And the third thing is perhaps the most simple of all, but it also requires the most clarity and that is make a decision. Just make a decision, decide, all right, this is how it's going to be. This is like whatever it takes, I'm going to get to that outcome that I want. Whatever I have to become, if there's discomfort, I'm going to do that. Because I, as I said, all these other details that I've mentioned in the years since, they might have happened. Some of them might have happened, but you can't tell me. No one can tell me that things would have turned out the way they did without me making that decision that I did uh, when I was 25. And that was because I'd had enough of the way things had been going, especially over the last 18 months of my life. I knew what I would like things to be like. And I just decided that whatever it took, that I was, I was, I was going to, I was going to change things and I was going to turn them around. And that's what happened. It's those three things. Absolutely. I really appreciate your time on the phone, uh, on the call today, because so many people are going through stuff, but they might not have that one person like you did, um, you know, who just brings them a CD pack off a mentor who can literally change your life. So if somebody was waiting for a sign, I hope this was it, because, um, you know, if you're going through stuff, your environment might actually be you know, causing you to not realize exactly who you 
are supposed to become. So like what Ben said, forget what society says, forget how others act, just worry about being a better version of yourself day in and day out. And when you incorporate this self-love, it will actually propel you on a sustainable path toward turning your life around. Now, Ben, I can't thank you enough for yet another exciting episode, um, you know, and your value on this uh, show today. Uh, always happy to sit in prosper and like i said i wanted to i want to talk about my own story in this in, in this month in particular and uh, i'll also provide a link to my movember page if anybody wants to help me in the um in the campaign for for men's health awareness so yeah i'll, I'll send you a link there too definitely we'll make sure that it's included in the show notes bye for now